Hello, I'm Josh Van Jurett, and I'm the project manager for UDOT's Little Cottonwood Canyon Environmental Impact Statement. And I wanted to take a moment today to give everybody an overview of what's included in the final EIS and the preferred alternatives that have been identified. UDOT began this EIS a little over four years ago in conjunction with the Forest Service, the EPA, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Utah Transit Authority, and Salt Lake City Public Utilities. And the first thing we did was to review the past 30 years worth of studies and reports, and then we did additional environmental assessment, engineering, and impact analysis. So let's begin by reviewing the problems that SR210 has and is projected to have in the future. A brief overview of the comments we received during the draft EIS and what changed in the final EIS. For more information on tolling and occupancy restrictions, mobility hubs and parking structures, Wasatch Boulevard, snowsheds, trailheads, and roadside parking limitations, Please see part two of this video presentation. The goal of this project is to substantially improve transportation-related safety, reliability, and mobility on SR210 from Fort Union Boulevard through the town of Alta for all users. Ultimately, UDOT wants to deliver transportation options that meet the needs of the community while preserving the values of the Wasatch Mountains. Canyon traffic is predicted to have roughly 1,500 vehicles in the peak hour in 2050. And modeling shows that a mountainous road like Little Cottonwood Canyon can only handle around 1,000 vehicles per hour, which means we need to reduce about 30% of the vehicles to reduce congestion, travel times, and queuing. Under the no-build alternative, in 2050, travel times on SR210 are expected to be 80 to 85 minutes which is roughly four times longer than free flow travel times, and we expect that this will occur 50 days per year. Queuing of 6,700 feet is expected on 9,400 South, and 13,000 feet of queuing on North Little Cottonwood Road as a result of this increased traffic. That's nearly two and a half miles of congestion 50 days per ski season. If you're a resident of this area, you already know how hard it is to get into and out of your neighborhood some days and the number of these days is only going to increase. Let's start with a quick overview of the alternatives. After evaluating 124 different concepts, five action alternatives, as well as a no action alternative, were analyzed in depth as part of this EIS. The first alternative is enhanced bus with no roadway widening. This would be very similar to, today, to today's service, just more of it. A bus would leave every five minutes from each of the two mobility hubs. Enhanced bus service with the peak period shoulder lane would provide the same service as the first bus alternative, except buses would operate in a widened shoulder lane, which would reduce the travel time for riders of the bus. Gondola A would have a base station located at the mouth of the canyon, and all riders would take a bus from one of the two mobility hubs to the base station where a 35-person gondola cabin would depart every two minutes. Gondola B would be very similar, but the base station would be located roughly three quarters of a mile northwest of the mouth of the canyon along North Little Cottonwood Road. The Cograil alternative would have a base station at the same location as Gondola B with 15-minute departures and would follow an alignment primarily on the north side of the canyon due to limitations associated with wilderness and riparian habitat. We received over 14,000 comments on the draft EIS, so we know that this is a project that many people are interested in and have been following closely. I just want everybody to know I personally read every one of the comments that were submitted and appreciated the many perspectives and concerns that were brought forth. The final EIS includes every comment we received during the 70-day comment period and a response to each of those comments is also included. What you see here are the common themes we received in the public comments, including support for tolling and phased implementation. Let's talk about what changed in the final EIS. The main revision to the two bus alternatives were relocation of the bus stops at the resorts. The bus stops are now located at Snowbird Entry 1 
and just east of the Rustler Lodge for Alta-bound passengers. And these bus stops would include lockers, restrooms, and areas for people to get ready, but also wait for a bus to go down the canyon at the end of the day. There were no changes to the Gondola A alternative between draft and final, but Gondola B in the Cograil did have parking changes. We received comments stating that there were too many transfers in the Gondola and Cograil alternatives for people who parked at the Gravel Pit or 9400 South and Highland. So we increased the number of parking spaces at these base stations from 1500 to 2500, and all users would now drive directly to the base station without needing to take a bus from a mobility hub. Additionally, a one-way access road was added from about 9500 South Wasatch Boulevard to the parking structure to minimize traffic impacts to North Little Cottonwood Road, and also to improve service and access to those arriving from the south. The elimination of bus service to Gondola B and the Cograil base stations also reduced the winter operation and maintenance costs by $3 million per year, and it reduced the capital cost by about $40 million for both alternatives. So what was chosen as UDOT's preferred alternative? Based on the analysis of the environmental impacts and considering public input, UDOT has identified Gondola B as the preferred alternative for providing the best overall reliability mobility while improving safety. Construction of the gondola and the associated towers will be a visual change to Canyon users, but the impacts to resources such as the watershed, air quality, noise, and wildlife, as well as many other impacts were thoroughly analyzed and considered. But recognizing that safety, mobility, and reliability are issues on SR-210 today, and that it may take years to secure federal, state, or private funding for full implementation at Gondola B, UDOT is proposing a phased implementation starting with components of the enhanced bus with no canyon widening. And I'll talk more about that phasing in a few slides. I'd like to give a quick overview of the preferred alternative. The total trip time is estimated at 55 minutes, with travel time in the gondola at 27 minutes to Snowbird and 10 additional minutes to Alta. I think it's worth noting that this is only one minute longer total travel time than the enhanced bus option in Alternative 1. The revised capital cost is $550 million. This includes $159 million for tolling infrastructure, transit and trailhead parking, snow sheds and widening Wasatch Boulevard. This $159 million would be consistent across all five action alternatives. The winter operation and maintenance cost is $4 million per year, and if summer service was implemented, then that would increase by another $3 million per year. I just wanted to touch on two of Gondola B's environmental impacts. For more details and information on other impacts, please refer to the final EIS. But with regards to air quality, none of the five alternatives exceed air quality standards. All of the alternatives actually improve air quality simply through fewer private vehicle trips. And this results in a savings of around 4,000 tons of greenhouse gas per year, or roughly a 25% reduction. With regards to water quality, Salt Lake City Public Utilities and Metropolitan Water District combined provide water to just shy of 500,000 people in the Salt Lake Valley. And many of these people are getting their drinking water from Little Cottonwood Creek so protection of the creek is critical. UDOT used the prior 30 plus years worth of storm history in our water quality modeling. And assuming worst case conditions, contaminant concentrations did not approach any critical levels associated with drinking water in any of the five action alternatives. UDOT took many factors into consideration when identifying Gondola B as the preferred alternative in the final. The gondola has the highest travel time reliability and that's because it operates in a separate alignment from the roadway, so it's not prone to delays associated with heavy snow, crashes, slide-offs, or slow-moving traffic. And while the initial construction cost is the third highest, the overall 30-year life cycle cost would be the lowest of all the alternatives. We also completed additional gondola visual simulations between draft and final, based on the public comments we received, and these can be found in Chapter 17 and Chapter 32. During the public comment period, many people suggested that UDOT start with increased busing, more parking, and tolling before moving to alternatives that had a larger footprint and larger environmental impacts, and that's what UDOT is proposing. 
Again, recognizing that safety, mobility, and reliability are issues on SR210 today, and that it could be years to secure the necessary federal, state, and or private funding for full imp implementation of Gondola B, UDOT is proposing a phased implementation plan starting with components of the enhanced bus service without roadway widening in the canyon. Currently, UDOT doesn't have funding to implement the proposed preferred alternative, and this is why we've proposed this structured phasing plan to alleviate current problems while still addressing the long-term need. The proposed phasing would include increased and improved bus service as described in the enhanced bus service alternative with no canyon roadway widening, tolling or single occupancy vehicle restrictions, and the construction of mobility hubs. UDOT would also proceed with Wasatch Boulevard improvements, construction of snow sheds, and implementing trailhead and roadside parking improvements as funding allows. These improvements will improve air quality, protect the watershed, and increase the quality of life for residents and canyon users by reducing traffic congestion as private vehicles shift to transit. Because the recommendations of the final EIS and the record of decision are so important to current and future generations of canyon users, there will be a 45-day public comment period to help ensure that we make the most informed decisions possible. And we're asking everybody to focus their comments on the analysis contained in the final EIS, such as revisions made to the draft, the impacts analysis associated with the preferred alternatives, and the proposed phased implementation. We'll be accepting comments through the project website, emails, voicemails, written letters, text messages, and please see our website for the information that you see here. As the lead agency in charge of preparing the EIS, UDOT will be responsible for selecting the preferred alternatives in the record of decision. Issuing the final EIS as a separate document before the ROD will helpfully help us resolve many of the comments provided on the final EIS and give everybody another opportunity for public input prior to the issuance of the record of decision. We anticipate issuing a record of decision in the winter of 2022-23, and this is the final step in the EIS process. Implementation of the selected alternative can only occur after the record of decision is issued and when funding is identified. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope it was helpful. Also, I hope you'll take some time to review the material that's included in the final EIS and provide any additional comments that you might have. The public input we've had during this process has been incredible, and I truly believe we have a better document because of all the input that you've provided thus far in the process. Thank you.